I'm gonna be honest, I was not expecting it to, to stand up to this. One of the biggest concerns with the bun booth was how fast it is to set up. And people were saying it looks like it takes forever to set up. Like it's gonna take you so much longer to set up than a regular table. So I'm gonna time that real quick in live. There's a, there's a timer that's gonna pop up right here when I say go. And I'm also gonna set up two Maui 5 Go's right beside it to show you guys how quick it is to fully set it up. I'm gonna power it up and everything. Ready, let's, uh, let's get the camera in a wider angle lens position and we'll go. All right, so I got everything loaded in behind me similar to if you loaded into a venue. Let's start the timer and let's go. Timer, go. That's it, we're done. I was gonna turn the mic on, but uh, my boy Kalen, who used this last, um, he left the mic on and it died. But from start to finish, that is how long it took me to set up two LD Systems Maui 5 Go, the whole entire bun booth. But all I gotta literally do now is put my laptop up here, plug it in, and we are ready to go. And actually, all I gotta do is feed my wires up from my laptop, which actually, this thing right here, it's really convenient, because you can just take this off, and then my, uh, my cords are right here. So all I gotta do is just feed that up through there. Plug it into my laptop, plug it into my laptop, and we're good to go. I believe that was right under eight minutes to set up the whole entire bun booth and both of the LG Systems Maui 5 Go's. Now keep in mind, obviously I didn't tape down any cables and also I'm not running power to the LG Systems Maui 5 Go, but that wouldn't take you more than maybe a couple more minutes to do that. So honestly, if you guys can set up your whole entire banquet table, everything on top of that table in less than that, um, feel free to send me a DM with you on video doing it in less than eight minutes like I just did because that right there is pretty impressive. Yo, what's going on guys? It's DJ Rick Webb and welcome back to the channel. I have in front of me the Bun Gear Command Center. Yes, my personal first ever black edition of the Bun Command Center that was ever debuted out in the world. And since the first video, you guys left a lot of comments in the comment section on that video as well as some concerns. So I kind of wanted to basically go over some of the questions you guys had, kind of demonstrate some of the stuff and also do a little bit of durability testing because a lot of you guys were curious on how well this thing would hold up, some of the abuse we put it through on the road. And I've actually changed kind of the setup of how this is all wired and everything since the first video. And I'll explain that later in the video, but I had to change it based on how our business business works and stuff. So let's get on into it. So the next most common question asked on the video was durability. How strong is this? And then also a lot of people were looking at this uh, base plate down here and claimed that it looked like it would tip over very easily. So um, let me pretend to be a drunk guest at one of your events and let's see how easily this thing will hold up against a drunk guest. Sir, can you, can you play a request? Can you play a request for me? Play a request. I need, I need. Sir, sir, can you play? Can you play Backstreet Boys? Backstreet Boys, play Backstreet Boys, please. I'm, I'm putting all my weight on this right now. So. Like, all right, what if someone comes up and bumps into it? If you guys couldn't tell by that demonstration, I'm leaning all of my weight onto the edge of this. I can even go over here on the side where it's actually out a little bit further, and I can put the majority of my weight on it right now. The next thing was kind of like. Pushing it over, obviously it's gonna rock a little bit because I mean you're putting a lot of force to it. But I'm, I'm literally that's a lot of force. That hurts my hand. Basically, what I'm trying to say is this thing is a unit and it is strong as can be. I told Joe on Facebook, I'm like Joe, I'm gonna take a sledgehammer to the bun booth and we're gonna see what happens to it. And he's like, don't, don't you dare, don't you dare. Well, I'm taking a sledgehammer to it. I'm gonna be honest, I was not expecting it to, to stand up to this. I was expecting to put a couple dents in this one. Ow, ow, ow. All right, before you go commenting in the comment section down below, no, this is not a true sledgehammer. This is a dead blow hammer. Uh, basically, there's a bunch of plastic beads inside of here. So when you hit, it smacks with all the, the beads. This is more forgiving than a true metal sledge, but it definitely is not like a rubber mallet. This thing actually can put a dent in something. 
Yeah. Well, now that we got a lot of the fun stuff out of the way with the bun boop, the durability testing, let's talk about these right here, the big microphone antennas that go on the sides of the bun boot. A lot of you guys said that these things are big, bulky, and ugly, and you don't have to, you don't have to use these big ones. You can use these little ones as well if you choose to. Some things to keep in mind though, these will work better for longer distances than these will, but I guess in most scenarios when you're in a room, uh, these will work perfectly fine. These will get you plenty of distance. These are quarter wave antennas. These come stock on most microphones. Some microphones come with these big ones as well, uh, but you can 100% use these and they are a lot less noticeable than these. So this right here is one of those big bulky antennas that you guys said looks ugly as can be. And this right here is one of those quarter wave antennas. Again, a lot less noticeable than the big bulky antenna over here. So if you don't wanna use these, you can 100% use the little quarter waves as well. Little side note slash plug, uh, do not, absolutely do not take my word for uh, using these microphone antennas. You should be using what is best for your application. I personally know little to nothing about microphones. I'm just going off of what I've been told. The person that I have learned a lot of this from is Ben at NLFX Pro. So if you are in any sort of way, shape or form needing to know some stuff or needing to buy some stuff related to microphones, please do yourself a favor, contact the professionals at NLFX Pro they will take care of you. They will tell you exactly what you need to buy for your specific application, and you can buy it directly from them. That's where we got um, these little side plugs. NLFX Pro is the one that makes these little side plugs for the bun boot, and they also sell all of these microphone adapters and stuff, including passive antenna combiners uh, and just all sorts of uh, antenna-related stuff. You can buy all of this at NLFX Pro. And that is what I did for my application. I just contacted Ben over there and told him, this is what I want to do. I want to have two mics, but I only want to have two antennas. What do I need to buy? And he basically sent me a quote it said you need all of this stuff and this is how you hook it up and uh, that's what I did so contact Ben at NFX Pro if you know nothing about microphones like myself and you're looking to learn what will work for your specific application and NFX Pro I'll leave them down in the description down below now on the note of microphones and the different antennas like I mentioned at the beginning of the video I have completely changed the setup that I have for this boob inside of it I've actually basically stripped out the whole entire rack and there's a reason for that. So as you guys saw in the last video, the Bun Command Center is now where I keep my SZ. And actually it is now the permanent home for that. I have my deck saver over there and I'll show you the guys that later on how we break this down. Um, but this lies permanently in here. It, it stays in this booth. The Pro X case unfortunately is no more. This thing is empty. It's just got ports on it. Um, yeah, it's no more. But when getting this booth, as you guys saw in the last video, the main reason for that was I wanted a very clean, nice looking booth that's quick to set up and is very portable. This booth for me is meant to be that booth that I take out to those those events that are in the middle of nowhere, those barn venues, those, those events where I cannot get a trailer in, those events with stairs, the very portable based events, the events that I need to be very portable for, that's what this booth is meant for. It's meant for those quick, dirty uh, setups, those quick, easy load-in events. That's what this is meant for. As you guys know, I have a secondary booth, which is my custom booth right here, which I have a little bit of a cloth over top of right now that holds my Rain 12s, my S9. This is my main booth. This is like, if I have the option, I take this booth out. This is the first option, but this thing is big and bulky, as you guys know. It goes in that giant flight case right there. It needs a trailer to transport it. It's just not practical for those events where all I'm doing is showing up, setting up two speakers and DJing, or a wedding that's in the middle of nowhere, a wedding in a barn, where I need to be very portable in terms of being able to get in and get out. So that booth is meant for the bigger events, those big weddings, those super fancy ballrooms, that have really nice easy load-ins where we can roll that giant fly case in. That's what that booth's for. This booth is meant for those portable events. Now, why am I emphasizing that? That's because I completely redid the wiring on this booth. So first off, the most notable thing, I have literally taken everything out of the rack. And there is a big reason for that, and I'll get to that in a second, but let me show you guys what I did to wire it differently. So now in the Bun Command Center, I only have one wireless microphone. It is Velcroed in here at the front and it runs 
to the two side antennas on the left and on the right and I'm using quarter wave now instead of half wave because it's a little bit more easily hidden in the booth and then there's a power strip on the back which has my power cord over here for my laptop it has the power for the SZ it has the power for the wireless microphone and it even has a phone charger here as well for me and that's it it's very simple and that's it. It's a very simple setup now for the Bun Command Center. Everything is in the top. Very similar to how Joe had his setup. It just makes a lot of logical sense, especially when you have multiple booths. And I'll get to that here in a second. So basically all I have to do at events, I have these two drop down XLRs right here. These are coming from the top of the SZ. So I just plug in my two outs for my speaker. And then I also have one power cable coming down from the power strip and plugging into our power source. And that's it. It's very simple, very easy. And it's very similar to how I have this booth set up. Coming out of the back of my main booth, if you guys know, there are two XLRs coming from the S9 mixer and a power cable coming from the power strip inside of the booth. You guys maybe see where I'm going with this. Because I have two booths, it did not make logical sense for me to put two to three grand worth of overkill audio gear like mixer boards, power conditioners, stuff like that that I would like to use with multiple different setups into one permanent setup. And because I have multiple booths, it made more sense to take that two to three grand worth of extra processing gear and put it into something that can be used with either of the booths. And that thing is actually right here. It's an 18U rolling rack case. This is going to be a completely separate video coming out soon where we build out the whole entire rack case to make my events super portable, especially with the big booth back there. Now, if you caught what I said there, the gear that's going into this rack that was in this rack is overkill gear. And that brings up a very good point, and that is that I really do not plan on using that rack with this booth. This booth right here, as you guys know, is my portable booth. That back there is my main booth. If I can use that booth, I will take that booth. But that booth goes into that giant road case right there and has to be loaded in a trailer. It can't go upstairs. It's heavy. It's big. It's bulky. It takes two people to actually move the thing. Um, so for that reason, I have the bun booth. The bun booth breaks into those bags you see behind me that you saw me set up in the earlier in the video. This is my portable booth. So it's very stripped down on purpose because the events I'm going to be using it at are not going to be large events. They're going to be events where I'm just setting up a couple speakers and I'm rocking out. So for that reason, uh, I stripped out the rack and made this very simple uh, with just having one wireless microphone, the SZ, and just quick and easy. Quick and dirty and easy to set this up, easy to use, portable. That's all you really need. You don't need all that overkill stuff. And continuing on the note about the new setup for the Bun Command Center, it is good to note now that the SZ is now permanently going to live in this booth. I said in the last video that I would be taking it out and putting it into the Pro X case off the side that I have, my custom built Pro X case that I built out multiple years ago. That case is pretty much no more. That case is basically going to the graveyard in the garage is going to sit here. Um, we might use it for some events, maybe, I don't know, probably not. The SZ is now permanently living in the Bun Command Center, and there are some hacks you can do to make sure that your controller can stay in here and transport it in here and use it in the bag. So let me show you how you do that. First off, it starts with securing your controller into the boot. This is done with this stuff right here, industrial Velcro. So if I can do this one-handed, I'm going to lift up uh, as you guys can tell it's 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 velcro down pretty damn good uh, all right as you guys can see i have velcroed the whole entire length of the rails and as you guys could tell by the the power and the force i had to do this thing's not going anywhere it is permanently velcroed here and it takes a lot of force to pull this thing out of here uh and also i can note right there are the two xlrs that go down as well as the power coming from the power conditioner and these are the two antennas that go out to the antennas on the sides um so there's just a little bit of the underworld and i've actually gone through and kind of wire tied a lot of this to the rails so it's a lot cleaner and a lot more organized but Velcro is the first step in being able to transport your controller inside of your Bun Command Center. 
you need to Velcro the whole entire length of the rail. So now I need to readjust that because as you guys can see, it's kind of off. All right, first step is Velcro. And I'm actually going to show you guys kind of how this gets broken down too. So in the process of doing this, I'm gonna break it down. So first off, I need to pop this off real quick. This thing is dope because it's just light and easy. It's polycarbonate. You can take it on and off and it gives you full access to all of your wiring. So I can go in here. I can power that off real quick. So next step in transporting your controller inside of your bunk command center, you need to buy one of these. This is a deck saver. So what this is, it's a hard plastic. This thing is very strong. And uh, what it does is it goes over all of your buttons so that when it's in the bag, your buttons don't get uh, dented, they don't get bent. So this slides right onto here and it actually kind of locks on actually got a little bit of a lock to it as you guys can tell it kind of like clamps around it and it has a pretty firm fit so that when you pull it off it actually kind of pops on and you gotta like push it down and pop it onto place so first step velcro second step you need a deck saver and the third thing you need one of these straps now this strap right here is nothing fancy it's not a ratchet strap it's just a tie down strap it just simply you pull it it locks it's got a little lever that you can loosen up all we're doing with this is we're just kind of putting it around the deck saver and around the polycarbonate <laughs> thing here so that when we pick it up, the deck saver doesn't fall off. The controller itself with that industrial Velcro is not going to come out. Unless you literally physically shake it upside down, it's not gonna come out of this unit. And I have an SZ. SZs are probably one of the heavier controllers on the market right now. And with that industrial Velcro, it's not gonna come out of here. This right here purely is to hold the deck saver on and to hold our polycarbonate on. So that way it's easier when we actually put it into the bag. So we put this around it. I'll loosen this up a little bit. Bang it down a little bit. And that right there is the mod to be able to transport your controller inside of your bun command center. Industrial Velcro on the rail, deck saver, and a strap. I will link everything that I used in the description down below so you can do as well. But now let's actually go through the process of breaking this down. And for the teardown, as you guys will see, it's actually way quicker than the setup process, which was eight minutes. So all we have to do is first take our laptop stand off, put it inside of our bag. Then we want to feed our cable back into our booth so that way this cable doesn't get damaged in transport. We want to take off our microphones on the side. And I've actually repurposed this little AccuCase bag that I have to be able to uh, hold my microphone, hold like some little accessories, some aux cables, an additional USB cable for our laptop, um, the microphone, batteries, the microphone itself. Um, just this little, little extra bag to be able to transport all of the stuff for the bun command center. I actually put it in one of the bags that I will show you guys in a second. But the next things we need to do is actually, uh, well, I just missed one of them. Make sure your laptop charger, if you have one, is tucked inside. Take your two clips off for your headphones and your microphone. I put them in this bag conveniently as well. I am now going to unplug my two XLRs. This is kind of hard to do one-handed, but those are my two XLRs that go out to my speakers. So we will unplug both of those. We will also unplug our power down here. Again, this is hard to do one-handed. Our speaker, this is our Furman strip, so we can push that out of the way. So now we have our cables. We want to tuck our cables up into the bun command center again for transport purposes. Now the next thing to do is to unscrew the top. So we have two of these, one on either side. We'll just unscrew this one real quick and easy. Unscrew this one real quick and easy. So there we go. We got both of our hand screws out of the top. And again, we just kind of put them inside of this bag right here. Again, this is my little bag for all of our accessories. Set that off to the side because now we can take the top off and put it into our bag. And I'm going to tell you right now, these right here are great handles to be able to pick this up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the bag behind it like I do now so that I can just kind of pick it up and set it down into the bag and I will film that now. And we can velcro this down. I do want to note another question was if these are zippers, so these are industrial Velcro. And a lot of people were asking how durable these bags are. I don't know if you guys can tell. These bags are not thin at all. These are probably some of the thickest padded 
uh, bags I've ever seen. Now, we also have our screws on the bottom. So there's three on the bottom. We just unscrew these, put these into our side bag over here. And now this will go in that bag and the base plate will go in that bag. Now, for anyone that saw my last video, you guys know that I put the base plate in with the base portion. So it's all in one bag. Now, I want to point out something kind of cool. With the rack being empty now, you kind of can see on the inside here, we got tons of storage space. So what I like to do is I like to take my laptop stand and put it inside of the actual thing. And then I could also take my little accessory bag and put it in there as well. And there's even plenty of space here to throw a bunch of cables and stuff that I will need for the event. So between the top bag here and my bottom rack that also has my base plate in it, I can put all of my cables in here for my event Everything literally minus my lights and my speakers can go into this bag right here All I'm literally taking is these two bags and then my my two speakers Whether it's these two speakers and maybe a bag with my two wash effects twos and that's it That's that that's very compact when it comes to load in and load out So I hope you guys enjoyed part two of the bun DJ Booth basically putting it through its paces, smacking it with a hammer, showing you guys that you can set up very quickly. In fact, actually in practice, we've taken this out to two events now. We've been able to set up our speakers, our bun booth in less than 20 minutes. From start to finish, I'm talking gaff taping all of our cables down, literally less than 20 minutes, we're fully set up and ready to rock and roll. That is super quick. And I'm including loaded, that's from the car to the point where we are fully set up in less than 20 minutes. That is insane. And then tear down, tear down, we normally are about 15 minutes or less to be fully out of the event with no lighting, with just speakers and the bun booth, less than 15 minutes, we're out of it. That's insane. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video. I hope you guys are having uh, a blast out there, but this is the Bun Command Center. If you guys are interested in checking it out, I'll leave a link in the description down below, as well as um, leave down the comment section down below what you guys thought of my little bit of testing and durability testing and answering a lot of you guys' questions, my new setup. Let me know down in the comment section down below. But anyway, like, comment, and subscribe, all that fun stuff. But as always, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep the record spinning, guys, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.